More than likely, you clicked on this video because you went out and bought yourself a new LG television just to realize it would not connect to your older analog equipment, which we all still love if you're old school. Well, I will tell you that most TVs have a fiber optic output on the back of it, or they use HDMI arc to send sound over to an audio system. But what do you do if you have that old school type of setup? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a $26 adapter that I purchased on Amazon to show you guys how to convert that over and use your older equipment. I'm Tech Steve, sit back, relax, and let's get started. Real quick, I just wanna explain what a digital to analog converter does. First of all, if you look on most TVs or a lot of audio equipment, you'll see something that's labeled optical or toss link. And what that is, is light that comes out of the television in a raw digital form. So on the other end of that, you're gonna need some type of converter so we can actually hear it. And that's where digital to analog converter actually means. Now on the analog side, you can hook up speakers, you can hook up headphones, and any type of equipment that doesn't require a digital input. So I hope that helps you guys out. Now let's take a quick look at the adapter. On the front of it, there's power lights, volume indicators, there's a headphone output, and there's a plus and minus for volume. And this one has a bass boost, which I'll show you guys a little bit later in the video how that works. On the other side, there's a left and right analog output that you can run over to your audio system or power bookshelf speakers. There's a coaxial and a optical end, so it will work on other type of devices. And of course, it does have a power input, so you can't power this off of fiber optic. In the box, you're gonna get a power supply, a fiber optic cable, a remote control, an instruction manual, and you get the digital to analog converter. And a few things I wanna point out is that the remote control does not come with batteries, nor does it come with the analog cables that you need to hook it up to your system. Those are sold separately. To hook up the digital to analog converter is very easy. All you need to do is plug in the RCA cables that you purchased separately into the adapter, then plug in the RCAs into a set of powered speakers or audio system that only has RCA inputs. And I know this has an optical input, but I'm using this for demo purposes. Next, you unplug the fiber optic into the back of the digital analog converter and then plug in the other side onto the back of the television. Now there's one final step we need to do to get this to work and I will tell you that the Magic Remote Control or any LG remotes will not control digital to analog converters. And the main reason is, is that it's not on a major list. So you're not gonna be able to find these on the list where the built-in programming IR codes are in there. So this one comes with a remote control so you can still control the volume. Otherwise you have to manually get up and turn down your speakers or audio system. So I want to get, let you guys know that before we jump into the next step. The first thing I want to show you guys is whenever you pick up the remote control after hooking up the digital analog converter, you can then use the TV speakers. As you see right there, in order to get the digital to analog converter to work, what you need to do is hit the gear on the LG remote control, and then you wanna go down to where it says sound outputs. Once you press on that, you'll get this option for different sound outputs like Bluetooth on this TV. You can send audio to a mobile device with the LG application, and then you have optical output as you can see right there. So if I try to raise the volume on the remote control, you see I get this speaker symbol with a circle and a line through it. And what that means is that it cannot control the audio anymore because all the audio is sent out of the fiber optic on the back of the television. So then what we can do is grab the remote control that comes to the adapter and try to raise the volume and you can see nothing's happening. So the final step is we wanna go down here to the bottom where it says all settings, click on sound, and then go over here to where it says advanced settings. From there, go down to the very bottom of the screen until you see one that says digital sound output. Once you press on that, we wanna switch it over to PCM. With that set up, we should now be able to control the volume. In some cases, you don't have to turn this to PCM, but if just in case you don't hear any sound, that's what you wanna do. At this point, you're ready to enjoy the digital analog converter on that audio system, but this one has a bass boost, so let's test it out. I'll put a little bit of footage together so you guys can hear the differences, and it may sound better with headphones.
In my opinion, the bass boost is a bonus. I didn't really think you would need that on a digital analog converter, but as you can see, it really increased the fullness of the sound. Now, one other thing I wanna show you guys is, let's say for example, you have a set of headphones that has a wire on it. Well, you can plug these into it as well with one caveat. Once you plug the headphones in, you're probably used to it shutting off the audio on the outputs, but it doesn't. However, this is the workaround for that. All you want to do is just plug these into the front output on the front of the digital channel converter. Then you would take your audio system and manually adjust the volume down to zero. Once you put the headphones on, now you can enjoy listening to them without both playing at the exact same time. The last thing I want to do is give you stats for nerds. Just remember the format is for PCM configuration. When it comes to frequency response, you're looking at 20 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. It has a signal to noise ratio of negative 100 dBs, and it will support 16 all the way up to 24 bits of digital sampling rate. So as you can see, for only $26, you may be able to finally get that sound out of your older analog equipment. I'm Tech Steve, and if you haven't already, make sure you go and hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace!